In this section of the video, we're going to be looking at the common cuts that you can make with a saw. We're going to be doing a cross cut just straight across the material. We're going to be doing a rip cut in line with the fibers of the material. And I'm going to show you how to do a plunge cut if you have to start somewhere in the middle of your material and you can't bring the tool in from the edge. Um, I want to note at this point that this tool is really amazing because it can do all the things. It can do cross cuts, it can do rip cuts. We've looked at some of the other tools like the compound miter saw or the um, table saw, which can only do one thing. Your miter saw does your cross cuts, your table saw does your rip cuts. While this saw can do all of these things, the miter saw is going to be way more accurate at doing cross cuts. And if you have to do a bunch of ripping, the table saw is going to be the more suitable tool. So it can do everything, but it just doesn't do it quite as well or easily as the tools that are made specifically for that purpose. But again, you can pick up a, like a nice circular saw for like 100, 150 bucks and you can do all the things, might as well. So let's look at what we have to do in order to get our saw ready to make our cut. Again, we're gonna be setting our blade depth. Saw is unplugged currently. I'm undoing my lever here, I'm still up there from the demonstration and going through this two by six here. I'm gonna set my saw blade just below the material and tighten it up. Now my saw is set for the material. I'm gonna set it out of the way. And I wanna introduce this wonderful tool here, clamp. Um, I find clamps really, really, really helpful, especially when you're working on your own, because number one thing that you wanna ensure when you're cutting with a circular saw is that your saw, that your piece of material is not moving around. So what I'm gonna be doing here we're gonna be just taking small chunks off of here. So I'll let that material stick over the edge of my supported work table as little as I have to, to comfortably make that cut. And then I'm gonna clamp it. I'm gonna clamp it to my work table so that as I am sawing, this is not wanting to move around, giving me both of my hands free to have on the circular saw. You want to have both of your hands on your tool at all times. This back handle here is going to be always attached to your hand and this front handle here is going to be what your front hand is going to be holding on to. So I'm ready right now to get whatever I need to make my markings. You might need a measuring tape. We're just gonna be marking off the edge. So I'll just need my pencil and a speed square. There's a lovely video. I think Ella is teaching you about all the funny things that this thing can do. We're just going to be using it over the ledge of our material here to mark where we want to be cutting. And then when you are aligning your saw with your cut, you have a little mark here in the front of your saw that says zero with a little notch in here. And you also have a little window that you can peek through here on the side of your saw. And you're gonna be using both your saw blade that you can see through your window and this line here in the front to align your cut. This first cut that we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be freehanding. Next one, I'm gonna show you how to use this speed square to make a cut. But for a freehand cut, which is what you're gonna be probably doing most of the time, you're going to be bringing your saw blade looking through the window to the right of your line and you're going to be bringing the edge over here by the zero to the left of your line so that you're essentially hugging your line with the saw blade on the right in the back and your zero mark to the left of the line in the front <clears throat> for getting your cut started when you're starting your cut you want to make sure that your saw blade is never touching your material so right now I have my saw tooth touching the material. I'm going to be pulling my saw slightly back, making sure that I'm still aligned in the front and then I'm ready to make my cut. I'm gonna put my safeties on and it's gonna be loud. So again, I'm bringing my saw over here with the heavy side, the side that the motor is on, on the supported side of the material this one over here is going to be my waist. It's going to fall down at the end of the cut. 
So you want to make sure that the heavy side of your saw is resting on that on that supported side of the material before you make your cut. And the way that I position my body with the saw, I'm going to make sure that my cord, which is not plugged in, that my cord is way out of the way behind my body. And I'm going to position myself catty corner to the saw so that as I am making my cut, I can just lean my body coming with the force from my back foot through this cut. I don't have to do any excessive bending over and I have to reach my hands really far. I can just use my body on the saw to make this cut. So now that I have my saw plugged in, I have my cord out of the way. The blade depth is set to the right dimension. I can bring my saw again right up to the cut line with the blade on the right hand side of the line and my little zero here to the left hand side of the line. I'm going to grab onto this front handle and bring my saw ever so slightly back and then I'm going to make this cut.